Since I was a child, I have had a special vocation for spirituality and religion. I dreamed of becoming a priest at six years old, and for the rest of my youth, I pursued a strong desire to join the Catholic Church as a priest or a missionary. Today I can affirm that mine was an, an undefined desire for absolute infinite uh, for a fatherhood that would embrace me and take me away from my father's dark and violent terror. Growing up, I tried to enter the seminary but was told that I did not have the right requirements to convince the rector, the rector and that if I wanted, I could attend the courses as private student not admitted to the seminarian's dormitory. dormitory. I was a very shy and insecure boy, but in that refusal I saw the sign of a destiny that was beginning to detach itself from the world of my childhood imagination. For the first time I suspected that there was something different in store for my future. I would have been a priest, not in the body, but in the soul. My God would not have been the anthropomorphic God of the Holy Scriptures, but an omnipresent God, like as light as air, diffused in us and in the universe around us. His God is the genius of humanity and of all sentient creatures, who tough him, who do him, reach a state of depersonalization, overcoming the, link, the limiting pages of the ego, and leading to the global intelligence that embraces everything and everyone. In doing so, at last, it cancels itself. God is an abstract intelligence, but also inclusive of every aspect of reality. These are means of abandoning the sufferings of sensitive life and letting ourselves be gently, progressively ferried towards the wonderful, uncontaminated space of perfect nothing. Perfect nothing. I have written many essays on universal religion, in particular referring to the only natural state of choice for every organic and inorganic being. This is the perfect nothing, not sensitive, free from any anchoring to matter and from any impurity of conscious stuff. The disappearance of man in the eyes of the world makes him similar to God. God himself invests man by depriving him of his uh, rationality, of his guilty eye open to the world, dragging him into the blessed cradle of unconsciousness when in the evening he falls asleep, forgetting the worries of the day. How much more gentle for man should be the sweet sleep of death? Now, these principles, sacred to the authentic religiosity of every age, have been muddied, unhinged, disowned by the great historical religions of the West, in particular the Christian Church, see the Lord, sees the Lord as the God of life or emotionality, or the guilty accumulation of goods and riches in this life and in the other. That continues to be perceived as a state of guilt, almost as a divine punishment for man's happy pride. Nowadays, a martyr who dies by fate will be judged with pity, mockery, distrust, it only matters to live as long as possible, to bless the space around us with children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and make sure that this chain of vital, conscious sufferings never stops until the end of time. 
How can man be blind and deluded? He aims to push through his own well-being, his happiness, and at the same time he gets entangled right in the quagmire of conscience life. The one that most embodies the characteristics of the green, bloody and burning Christian hell. This represents the two betrayal. This represents the two betrayal of historical religions today. They being unable to show their believers the way to overcome the vital labyrinth in which reason has plunged us. Uh, when they should instead guide them towards the acceptance of a state of freedom given only by the loss of the binding characters of the ego and of the ones of structuring personality. The true image of God is not what we worship on the altars, in a book, or in our broken, anguished heart. He is the goal to which, willingly or not, we approach day after day in prayer or in blasphemy until our eternal rest within the universal nothingness. See you to the next video.